All right, welcome back. We're gonna talk about cash flow. In every business, cash is king. This is what I micro-focus on. I have a huge background in businesses, large and small, all the way from Bank of America, multi-million dollar companies, down to small mom and pop shops. Everything is about cash flow. And this is how I bring my technology and banking skills all together into these pieces to help you optimize that efficiency of actually getting the deal closed. So a lot of what I talk about is um, cash flow. Give it the path of least resistance. And just like water flowing down a rocky road or a rocky river with trees, whatever is in its way, it goes around the path of least resistance. Do the same thing for your sales. Don't put up a barrier and say, we only take checks. We only take this, we only take that. You gotta open it up to everything. And if for some reason people are not willing to accept credit cards, I personally won't do business with them anymore. I had somebody else steal 6,500 bucks from me. I gave a deposit for a doors and the guy never showed up. Technically he did move to Honduras or he's claimed he did. And I ended up suing him. So, but the point is, is that had I used a credit card, I could have just called Visa and I could have got Visa involved. They could have found him and hunted him down. So I never again will use anything but a credit card. And it also shows me that the person on the other end, the merchant has passed and qualified credit, uh, credit underwriting guidelines. So I know that that person has good credit if I give them a credit card because that's how you accept Visa. So let me just kind of talk about a couple things. Online payments are commonplace. Everybody's doing it. In fact, if you're not doing it, you don't look good because everybody else in the world is doing it. And nobody likes writing checks anymore. I hate writing checks. I never write checks. I literally never write checks. So I do online banking and I can sometimes send a check that way. But for the most part, I expect everybody to have a website where I can make an online payment and review my history ideally. So recurring payments uh, are even easier. If you are a merchant and you have whatever business model you have, consider how could you do just like the big boys do, uh, like Verizon and all these other guys, Time Warner, what are they doing? They're charging you little bits of money every month. They're not asking you for $1,000 or $2,000 up front. They're saying, well, we'll just take 60 bucks a month or whatever it may be. And so they're getting into the residual model. It's more uh, consistent and people like consistency. They don't like change. They don't want big, big bulk numbers. So we can talk about recurring more and the tools that are available to help you with recurring billing. That's what I specialize in. I have custom online systems to do recurring billing, online invoicing, all that kind of stuff we can talk about later. Uh, Visa protects everyone, so leverage that. What that means is that if you're selling, say, something, for example, like a deck, okay? It's a big purchase. It's a $14,000 deck, and you're a little hesitant. You know, the customer is, the cardholder is. Uh, it's a lot of money for that person, and they might say, well, you know what, I'm a little nervous about giving you a check. Use a visa. Pull the visa out and say, well, tell you what, we've got a $14,000 check. Uh, let's put down a deposit for materials of, say, $6,000. And let's say you get any portion of that uh, on a credit card, like $5,000, or ideally the whole thing. At least you have them engaged. At this point, they have, the, the, they have visa behind them. They know they can't get burned. They know they can't get lost. So they can't lose anything, right? So that, so leverage that. Say, listen, you can't lose this deal. Uh, this is going to be a good deal for you. And then we'll go back to fees in a second. So think like airlines, golf courses, and Verizon. Airlines, do you think a, a US Air would ever say, here's your ticket for your plane? Go ahead and send us a check whenever you feel it's, it's going to be necessary for you. Oh, if you want to book that business travel, yeah, go ahead and have your, uh, your accounting department send us a check whenever it's ready, net 30, you know, net 60, whatever you want to do. Never happen, right? So that's where you kind of want to think like, well, if they can get away with it, why can't you? So once you get to the airline, of course, cha-ching, they're going to hit you with their baggage fee. They want to upgrade you. They want to sell you earphones for two bucks on the plane. They don't even take cash. The other thing about cash is it's not traceable. They won't even let a stewardess, airline stewardess, handle two dollars for for headphones because they don't want that person having cash. So everything is traceable, trackable. That's what improves your business. Is you'll be able to run and account for everything. Everything is reconcilable, which is great. So golf courses, golf courses. You call a golf course to make a reservation, and they ask you for a credit card number. That's crazy. That you're not going to ask your business, your business uh, customer for a credit card, yet a golf course can call you, they don't even know who you are, and they can take your credit card number, and of course they're writing it down on a piece of paper somewhere, right? So it's crazy that you can't, they can ask you for a credit card number, but you feel guilty about asking your customer for a credit card number. It's just a way of saying, listen, we're both on the same playing field, we're both protected, you know, are you interested in doing business? And you will, I guarantee you'll fish out the people who are shady, people who are just trying to use you for a price or whatever it may be, you get them engaged. 
Verizon we already talked about with recurring. Verizon, sure, we'll send you a new phone. We'll just add it to your bill. It's like a house account. It's like a you know a account at a bar or something like that. Just put it on my tab. And that's, that's what you want. You want the cash flow to be the path of least resistance. So coming back down to upgrades, we already talked about that. Get them engaged, whatever it may be. Uh, got another customer that may say, well, uh, we do some kind of a service where they come out to your office, whatever it may be. Plumbers and everybody else now, same thing. It's an $85 visit charge. This weeds out the riffraff. You get them engaged, you get them committed, just like the golf course would. Don't bail on us because we are going to reserve that golf course for you so that we don't lose revenue. Same principle. So you can kind of flush out who your customer is, and that's a big question to ask yourself. Who is your customer? Is it somebody that does not have a credit card or is not willing to give you a credit card? That's a huge question. Uh, Last, we'll just talk about building credit card fees. Everybody said, oh, well, I don't want to pay credit card fees. That's why I don't take credit cards. I only take checks. And yes and no, I mean, that's good. But the problem is, is that the time that somebody writes you a check is going to be extended much, much longer versus if you're in control saying, well, I'm going to take your credit card and here's the date I'm going to charge you. So for example, if you're doing $100,000 in sales in a given month and your true cost, like we mentioned in the earlier video, is going to be, let's say, even on a business aspect, 2.3% uh, true cost, let's call that $2,300, right? That assumes that 100% of your sales for 100,000 were on credit cards. But the reality is, is that you may get some checks still. Let's call it 50%. You still get 50% checks, all right? So now that 100,000 is really gonna be 50,000 50, on checks and 50,000 on credit cards. If my true cost was 22.3% or $2,300, if I just increase my rates by half of this, so 1,150, so if I increase my rates by 1.15% across the board, half the time people are gonna give me a check and I'm gonna make money because I increased my rate. Half the time they're gonna give me a credit card, I'm gonna lose money, I'm gonna lose 1.15%. So that's the key is the balance out. How many times you've taken credit cards, how many times you've taken cash, and eventually you just you figure out your ratio as you move on. So if your ratio goes heavier toward credit cards, your 1.5 might go to 1.15, uh, might go to 1.5%. So, or vice versa, maybe go the other way. So uh, my point is, is just building your fees and don't be afraid of credit card fees and look at it as just the cost of doing business, like having a utility, having a cell phone. Uh, you could run your business without a cell phone, but it would be a nightmare, right? So just this, put this math into, into perspective on figuring out today with all your customers, how many people are really taking credit cards? How many people are not? And then reverse engineered it, build it into the cost, and I guarantee you, you will have more cash flow. So more on that later, and uh, we'll be back in a little bit.